I'll talk a little bit about uh, forensic handwriting analysis in CSAFE. And this is one uh, area where we have quite a few people working, even though um, it's only happening at one institution at this moment, which is Iowa State. Uh, unless, of course, we count our colleagues at Cedar Crest College, which um, will feature prominently in today's presentation. So here's the team uh, at Iowa State. So this one is a little, the photos are a little bit uh, um, outdated. But at Iowa State, uh, my colleague Danica Oman and myself are the two faculty leads. And Stephanie Reinders is a postdoctoral uh, research associate that joined us this year. Uh, we have um, several graduate students, Andrew Lim and N Brent, new graduate students, Anisha Ray and Ali Arabio that are going to start their graduate program in the fall. Um, and several undergraduates that work with us, uh, James Taylor, who has been really um, critically important for us in the development of software and Felix by Santiago and Julia Lundstrom, who are just joining us this year and who I hope will um, continue with uh, James's excellent work. Two colleagues at Cedar Crest College, uh, Professor Lawrence Porino from uh, the Forensic Science Program and Professor James Hammer from uh, the Mathematics Program, in fact, are the originators of the ideas that I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, at NIST, we work with uh, John Liebert and Robert. Uh, we get really excellent insights from them. And then again, uh, Amy Crawford and Nick Berry were two former PhD students in statistics who graduated a couple of years ago, but who started much of the work uh, we're doing today. So the overarching goal of um, our work here at CSAFE is to develop tools that will help examiners or hopefully will help examiners when they are doing uh, evaluations of handwritten samples. So I keep saying this, but I will say it again. There is no algorithm that can completely substitute the human examiner. But these algorithms, these quantitative methods can really provide a good tool for examiners and do things that examiners cannot do. For example, uh, they can provide a quantitative assessment of the, let's say, similarity between two handwritten samples, and they can provide probabilistic estimates of the question of writership. Did the same person write these two samples? But of course, to be useful, these algorithms need to have certain characteristics. They have to be flexible uh, so that they can be used for different types of tasks. They should be able to um, address different situations. And so a single method is not going to cut it. What we're working at CSAFE is that the in, we're working in the development of a suite of methods that are appropriate in different situations. Obviously, algorithms have to be accurate and reliable. So they have to um, provide uh, the right answer uh, most of the time, at least. Uh, the output needs to be quantitative and hopefully interpretable so that uh, not only examiners, but everybody else understands what the algorithm is doing. And one of the things we take pride of in CSAFE is that everything we produce is in the open domain, open the public domain and open source. So everybody can look under the hood if they want to and make uh, suggestions, in fact, the idea is that people can take what we do and improve it if, if, if that's, um, and so that's always a desirable thing. And of course, allow for examiner input. So uh, this can come in different uh, ways, but it is important for the examiner to keep some sort of control over what the algorithms are doing. The scenarios that we uh, address are two, you know, mostly, uh, the two scenarios that we consider are the case where you have um, a closed set of potential writers, and the second scenario is where you have an open set of potential writers. In the first case, uh, when you look at the two alternative hypotheses, the suspect wrote this uh, document, the 
the alternative hypothesis here says it wasn't the suspect, but it was one of this potential group, this close group of individuals who wrote this note. And here you have the situation, a situation, for example, that would fit in, into this type of scenario is where you have a bomb threat in a high school or, uh, or some sort of threatening note uh, that could have only been written by individuals with access to a certain uh, location. In this case, the, docu the question document is compared to the reference sample from uh, members of the closed group. And so what you have is a one-to-many comparison. And what you would like to know is who's the most likely writer in that closed set of writers. The open set of potential writers is different. This is where you have a question document and, um, and a suspect's known sample. So the question is, was it, is it more likely that this particular suspect was the author of the sample, or would we find a similar degree of, um, a comparable degree of similarity if we were comparing this uh, question document to samples from a random sample of individuals from some relevant population? So those are two different questions. And uh, we are trying to develop approaches that will work for both. The one that we have already, um, so the, the first approach that we developed had to do with this first scenario. What I'm going to talk about today is uh, something a little different. And, um, but let me first- uh, uh, Alicia? Yes. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. It has to do with the concept of randomness and uh, without getting esoteric. But w the, the question is, when, when you're talking about to compare to a random sample, that kind of opens it up to the entire population. But typically, we're not looking at a, tip at a real random sample. We're looking at a closed sample of potential writers. So it, 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 is it really true, true randomness that we're talking about here? Yeah, not really, right? So, um, so, but there's two possibilities, right? So one of them is the closed set of writers. So this is a specific set of people that could have written this note. Where I can tell you this closed set is composed of John, Peter, Mary, and Paul. Another one is an open set of potential writers where I'm telling you the potential writer of this uh, document must have been um, somebody with uh, who was educated in Europe uh, that uh, writes cursive that um, that is left-handed for example so that you know it's a it's a subset of uh, the complete population but it could be anybody in that uh, particular subgroup of people so that's a distinction we're trying to make. So no, it's not open to anybody in the universe. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for the question. So these are some of the ongoing handwriting projects that we have uh, right now actively, um, well, ongoing at CSAF. So the, the first one is the oldest one. It's this, this is a Bayesian hierarchical approach to estimating probability of ridership. This is the work that Amy Crawford and Nick Berry had developed while they were uh, working in CSAFE. It's the most mature of the projects. And uh, what this essentially does is, um, given a question uh, writing sample, can we compute uh, and a reference set of, uh, of potential writers uh, can we estimate the probability that each one in that particular set was the author of that uh, question document? And to do this, uh, the approach that was used was writing was is decomposed into graphical structures. And then um, these graphical structures are clustered into similar groups of graphs. And at this moment, we have we we are arbitrarily using 40 clusters of similar graphs. And then what the data we use in order to estimate this probability 
is the, is the frequency with which a specific writer contributes graphs to each one of these clusters. And so what this uh, does is it provides for each writer in the set and for the question document, a vector of 40 frequencies of 40 numbers that we use to uh, fit this model. So the, the, what we compute is uh, the probability with which a writer contributes graphs of each type when writing a certain a given document. And using those data, we can, we can fit a model that associates, um, that tells, that allows us to compute the probability that given these frequencies of graphs, uh, this particular person may have written this document. It turns out to work really well. So we have tested this approach. We have developed and testing this approach using a variety of handwrite, hand uh, writing samples, the ones that we have collected in CSAFE, but also samples that uh, are uh, provided by the IAMS database and the uh, CVL database. And so very different types of handwriting. Um, and uh, the approach seems to be quite reliable as long as we have enough writing uh, in the question sample. And that's the question, what do we mean by enough writing? At this moment, we are thinking about how to test that and we don't have anything to say at this particular moment. A second approach is to use something called a Kinesa decomposition of common words. So there's some words that appear in most, uh, in most handwritten samples, the word the, for example, or the word and, uh, they're short words, but they're very, very common. And I am not going to say much about this right now because this is where I'm going to put the focus for the rest of the talk. Uh, we've been looking at uh, regression methods for estimating um, the gender, the age, other attributes of the writer of a question document. This is uh, ongoing work. It seems to be promising. Uh, we're, right now, we're focusing on the slant of the writing, and the slant is quantified by looking at the um, angle with respect to the horizontal uh, that we compute from these graphical structures. Um, the problem with this approach is that it requires a large uh, sample size, and we are still not there, but we will get there. And finally, um, we have started using machine learning approaches, so learning algorithms, to classify pairs of written samples into same or different writers. And uh, this is appropriate for the one-to-one -one comparisons. And uh, this is, again, seems to be pretty, um, pretty promising, but I will leave this for a future update. Uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, focus on the Kinesio decomposition of common words. Alicia? Yes? Not, not trying to be annoying, but when, no. when, you mentioned this, when you mentioned the sample, do you, have, you use any specific sam sampling plans or how do you set that up? Uh, you mean when we're talking about the regression methods? Uh-huh, in order to get the, get the, uh, the comparison. Signatures and how do you set? How, how do you, what type of sampling plan do you get? For oh, them? I see. No, we haven't. So, to when we say compare to a relevant a sample from the relevant population, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, we haven't thought about this uh, much at all, to be honest with you, yet. And so, um, at this moment. I don't really have anything intelligent to tell you, but uh, <laughs> this is something that we would love to have some input uh, when moving into that direction. So right now we haven't really thought about how you might consider picking the relevant population against which to compare. Great, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so um, I said something about this a minute ago. Uh, how do we extract data from handwriting? So typically what we have is a grayscale scanned image of a handwritten document. And what we're focusing on here is the shape of the writing, not the content. And so um, if we present this uh, scanned image to a computer, hopefully the computer can help us decompose this writing into different types of structures. For example, we could uh, think about decomposing the writing into graphical structures that 
uh, roughly correspond to characters, so roughly correspond to letters and numbers, but not necessarily. Or maybe we can uh, consider, so parse out individual words, maybe even uh, entire lines of writing. And depending on the level of the parsing that we do of the handwriting is the method uh, that we're going to be employing and the type of measurement of features that we're going to be extracting from these graphical structures. The approach I described very briefly, uh, the Bayesian hierarchical modeling approach, is based on uh, these small graphical structures that correspond roughly to letters and numbers. What I'll talk about next is uh, based on decomposing writing into individual words. So uh, kinesic decomposition of writing is what I'm going to discuss next. And the original idea is, uh, comes from uh, Quirino, so Larry Quirino, Ali Arabio, and James Hammer from Cedar Crest College. We are lucky to have Ali working with us at CSAFE right, um, as of last year. And um, here's the idea. The idea is, um, imagine you have a word, and in that word, imagine you can define different types of markers. So let's suppose, and I'll show you an example in a minute. And then uh, draw edges between uh, three different types of markers. And uh, this is, and so construct these triangles that, uh, several triangles that characterize a word. This idea is based on a method uh, proposed by a, a mathematician that worked in graph theory called Kinesar. And um, the question that we, that we ask is, can we use this idea to compute uh, a similarity index that might be used to compare two handwritten samples? Uh, on the left here, this pretty picture is an example of uh, Kinesar triangles. So let's suppose you have three types of markers, uh, green, blue, and red markers. So the Kinesar triangles in this case are formed by uh, joining using edges. Uh, three three uh, of these nodes, all three have to be different. So here I have a triangle with a green node, a red node, and a blue node. Here I have another one with a blue, a red, and a green, and so on and so forth. And so the, the first thing we need to be able to do, and I'll tell you in a minute how these uh, nodes can be defined on words, but the first thing we need to do is have some software that allows us to uh, recognize words uh, from a handwritten sample. And this is the work of James Taylor, uh, our, our um, one of our undergraduates at CSAFE. Um, Handwrit Handwriter is a software that was written that Amy Crawford and Nick Berry and uh, other undergraduates wrote some time ago that allows you to uh, decompose writing into uh, graphs that correspond to characters. James took handwriter a step further and included a functionality that allows you to separate writing into words or portions of words. And so the idea, this was based on a neural net, so on a machine learning algorithm that, um, that trains the computer to recognize the beginning word, the beginning letter in a word, the ending letter in a word, and everything that's in between. And so, uh, so once you have this first, last, middle, and single characters identified, then you can use rules to build back words, put these things into what corresponds to words. And I have to say that um, the, uh, the code does this very nicely with some in the high 90s accuracy, uh, so 97 or 98 percent accuracy. So we're pretty happy. Now, once you have these words, uh, what can you do with them? And this is where this Kinesar decomposition uh, comes in. So the, the, the nodes that I was talking about earlier uh, in this particular application are five, six types of nodes. There's another type that I didn't include here. The blue nodes correspond to the beginning of a word. So this is a blue node. A green node is the highest node in a word. A pink node is placed anywhere, anytime there's an intersection between two edges. 
Um, an orange node is the end of the word, and the purple node is the bottom of a word. So now you have all these different types of nodes, and the question is how many uh, triangles can you construct, how many Kinesia triangles can you construct with those nodes? So here's an example of the word the, and here are the triangles that you can construct for this particular word the. So you start with a word like this, you end up with a collection of triangles like this. Now imagine that you have uh, the word the, um, so here's for example, okay, so in, in any document, the word the is going to be repeated many times. Uh, here's an example where we have writer one and several documents from writer one. And the only thing we're looking at is the first occurrence of the word the. And so this is the number, so this is the type of data you can extract from that. So this is the median length of the uh, edges of the triangles, the range in the length, the number of triangles that you can construct, the average area of the triangles, the standard deviation of the triangle areas, the maximum of the areas, blah, 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 blah. So you have a lot, this is what we might call the features that we extract. And so the question is uh, whether those features uh, can, we, can be used in a statistical model or in a classification algorithm to answer the question, these two thes seem to have been written by the same person or not. Um, these are the word the for three different writers uh, on many occasions, so many repetitions of the word the. You can see the with the triangles extracted. You can see that for this particular writer, there's a lot of consistency, so the within writer uh, variability is very low. For this one and the third, is there, it's somewhat consistent. This one in the middle is all over the place. And Gary Licht from the Iowa Department of Criminal Investigations gave us a really interesting insights. Uh, he was wondering whether people that write like this are trying to disguise their writing, uh, what might be the reason for such variability. So very quickly, we're, um, let me skip over this. So um, some messages. So the, there was a black box study recently uh, carried out by FBI and Noblis, and uh, it suggested that document examiners are overall pretty good. So they have uh, low error rates, but not zero. So, so algorithms might be of use to them. And, um, the, and I already said this, so all of the, we're trying to provide, um, we're trying to construct these tools that examiners can use to come up with probabilistic assessments of the compare, when they do comparison between two or more documents. And uh, we're really eager to work with practitioners. So we would like to uh, talk about these methods in more detail and see whether any of this stuff is going in the right direction. And as I said earlier, our products are all open source, all in the public domain. So if anybody's interested in um, asking for any other software, please let me know and I'll point you to where to find them. Thank you so much.